What's up with your family? What's going on with your ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? You know who it is. It's your boy, John Mike, and it's Musician Mondays. Uh, and today, I'm going to kind of talk about uh, some things. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys forgive me for some of the mistakes you heard while I was sitting there playing on the intro. Uh, just kind of waiting on folks to come in or what have you. Uh, but anyway... Um, yeah, so I want to kind of pick up with where I kind of left off last week. Uh, and what you need to do, yeah, go ahead, hit that share button, invite your people in. I'm going to do a Warren Brown on you. Get your peoples in the house. Get them in the yank. Who knows? What's a yank? If you know what a yank is, besides when they say yanking my chain or something like that, I don't know. If you know what a yank is, please give me the definition of what a yank is. Otherwise, hit the share button, please. Tag some people. Uh, bring some people in on this stream. Uh, so get your folks up in the house. Get your folks in the house. Uh, I'm going to play around with some sounds and some different things that have kept me over the years from buying uh, new hardware keyboards, the Motif, the Kronos, all of these things that people are running out and buying uh, all the time and talking about the hardware. Can We had a big, long discussion last week on Musician Mondays about why I chose to just do 100% software. Uh, and we talked about computer specs and different things uh, that you can do in order to ensure that you get the best um, optimization out of your computer. And so this week, I want to kind of talk about sounds. Let's talk about the sounds you use, because what's the use of jumping in and going in and doing, going all VST, going all software, uh, and you can't, um, you don't know what to use. You know, you're just navigating this world. You know, a text, I've been getting hit up like inbox messages, emails for like the last week. Yo, bro, I'm getting my taxes in a few weeks and I'm thinking about buying this MacBook Pro and what sounds do I need to get and what do I need to invest in and all of that good stuff like that. So, um, you know, I wanted to kind of share some of the stuff over the years uh, and some of the reasoning why I don't buy uh, into the hype of buying new keyboards and stuff. I have my MacBook Pro. I got all my sounds on it uh, that I use. And it's just so much more uh, expandable. And the sound sounds so much better than the stuff that's there put there, the, the same old repackaged pianos and repackaged pads and repackaged strings and such that they're putting uh in these keyboards now they, they're, they're taking the same sounds and they're repackaging them in the motif they took all of the sounds out of the motif series and they put them in the montage and added a few new ones to kind of keep your mouth wet but for the most part it's the same old sounds you know what I mean? I got a core Chrome. It's got sounds from the Triton in it. You know what I'm saying? They, there's nothing new. They just slap a new name on it, slap a new, you know, interface, so to speak, slap a couple of new knobs on it, and boom, they're going to charge you $4,000 for it, you know, for the 88 key version, 2700 for the 61 key. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I just seen no need in investing in uh, any more hardware, I prefer to invest in software because sample-based versus PCM, you know, kind of uh, based sounds that you get in the board sound a whole lot better than the um, than the stuff that they're putting in these keyboards. And I know I got a, quite a few people that are agree with me. So this first sound, this is one of the things that I have here that I'm actually using. Uh, and you heard it all on the front end, if you were in on the front end, was actually uh, Keyscape, but it's actually a patch from, um, it's actually a patch from Keys, their new update, Keyscape Creative. And so this piano is actually called, um, what is it called? Piano S String Classic. It sounds amazing. It's piano with strings. I mean, listen to the depth of that. Listen to the 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 warmth that you get that you just don't get from um, hardware sounds.
that's just one patch. You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't have that layered with anything. That is the stock patch. You know what I'm saying? Uh, out of this Keyscape Creative, just one of the stock patches. You know, if I go in here, I'm in Omnisphere. If I come out of my little directory patch browser, it's just one patch. You know what I'm saying? It's not a multi as we would call it. It's not a multi-layered patch. I could layer other sounds with this as I, if I wanted to, but this is just a single piano sound. Listen how warm that sounds. I mean, for like worship, you know what I'm saying? Like, as, or, you know, we're talking church musicians. If there's some other church, non-church musicians on here, then you kind of know. You can use this for a ballad or a worship song. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know. It just it's the richness of it the the resonance the the warmth that you get from that particular sound and that's just one particular patch that i found uh that i've recently found that i start using now on that but i have omnisphere uh and uh and keyscape and it's got some it allows for some wonderful and amazing um patch combinations and things that you can do that just sound so much better and so much richer. Now let's go back to before I had Omnisphere, before I had Keyscape, what did I use? You know, because I just got Omnisphere and Keyscape like relatively within the last year or so, but there was stuff that I used way before that and it was Contact. So I'm gonna switch patches here uh, to Contact because Omnisphere, it's gonna run you about Four ninety nine, about five hundred bucks. Keyscape is gonna rent you another three ninety nine. Um, you know, if you want to get it, but they're well worth it because of the plethora of sounds. And I'm gonna go back to some Keyscape stuff in a minute. But before I got into um, Omnisphere, Keyscape, and all that stuff, I was using Contact. Contact is a um, what they would call a. It's almost like a VST host, so to speak company called native instruments creates this it's a sampler that's that's the best way to put it it's a sampler so uh native instruments created this sampler software and uh they have created their own libraries for this sampler uh and then there are tons of third party uh developers out there that have created uh tons of libraries that um that work inside of contact i mean just tons of stuff um and i've used a lot of it, you know, I have complete, um, their whole complete series thing. I have that. I've had it for years. Uh, and I just, you know, kind of update and upgrade every year or whatever the case may be, uh, just to kind of get the new sounds that they're adding in, but it's so much stuff inside of contact. One piano particular that I fell in love with years and years ago was this piano called the Alicia Keys piano. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I got it layered with some stuff. Let me turn my layer off here. Uh, gospel musicians, yeah. I'll get to that in just a second. But this is the Alicia Keys piano. I fell in love with this piano years ago. I think I got it back in like 2011, 2012, something like that. Now it's not as warm as Keyscape's piano, but uh, in a church service and with a little EQ sometimes, um, it cuts really, really good and really, really well, um, you know, through a mix and through a live mix. It sounds beautiful when you when you when you work with it. It's got nice resonance uh, on it or what have you. Ah, 
you get the picture. Um, it's it's really nice, really nice sound p piano. This piano alone, even if you don't invest in anything else, you can get this piano for like ninety nine bucks. You know, you can get a computer, it'll run on PC, it'll run on anything. Ninety nine bucks, you get the Alicia Keys piano. They got some other ones that sound really good too. Uh, the um, a recent one I bought, uh, the Gentleman. It's beautiful. It sounds just as warm. Has a little bit brighter tone than the Alicia Keys piano. Uh, but it's really warm and has some really good resonance with it uh, when you play around with it. But it costs around the same price point. Uh, the Alicia Keys piano has been one of my go-tos. I use the Alicia Keys piano pretty much live every Sunday. It is pretty much like my base layer when I'm laying. It's my main structure on which I build all of my other layers uh, on top of. I've just recently got into using Keyscape. I don't use it as much live. Uh, I have used it on several occasions live. It works well live, um, uh, at least in my situation it has. But uh, on a, because, I, because of this library, uh, it's so large. It's like 80 gigs uh, along with Omnisphere to be able to do some of the other layering. You got to have an external hard drive uh, plugged into your system in order to you know be able to utilize these libraries live but i'm looking to replace my cd drive soon with a, another external hard drive so that uh, not an external internal hard drive so i have two internal hard drives in my mac so i'll be in my macbook so i'll be able to uh run um run keyscape live more often uh, but until then uh up to this point the Alicia Keys piano has been my go-to uh, and my bottom layer on everything. It is the main. And then I layer on top of it with stuff like MK Sensation uh, and things of that nature, strings and pads and bells uh, and things of that nature in order to make sure that, um, that I'm able to have a nice bass to build on. But I love the warmth of the Alicia Keys piano. Sounds really nice. And so what I typically do is I build a virtual rack is what I do using contact. So I have a virtual, when I say virtual rack, I would do it and approach it kind of like I would if I had hardware rack. So on the bottom here, you can see I have Alicia Keys. And in this same instance of contact, I have um, one of my other favorites and the, one of the things that has kept me from going back to hardware, uh, which is the MK Sensation. We're all familiar with it. Jamal Hartwell, gospel musicians, the guy who does Neo Soul Keys, tons of other stuff like that. Really, really dope. Uh, really, really dope plug-in. Uh, so I use it as a layer. So I keep Alicia Keys here as the bass, and then I'll oftentimes have uh, MK Sensation down here to kind of build some layers on top of. So what I would do is I would, um, if I needed strings, then I can activate them easily down here in this interface. To get me some layers for that, some strings. If I'm doing a fast song, typically what I'll do is activate the brass and sing. So I have that steel Alicia Keys on the bottom. Oftentimes, I'll add in other layers like the EP2, and that's why I love MK Sensation because it's a multiple, it's a multifaceted plugin. It has like pretty much all your bread and butter sounds built in, and you can layer very quickly. You can build some real complex layers using just Alicia Keys and uh, MK Sensation, and get a real nice bed to kind of play. So that's what EP2 added. In. You know, 
then you can build on top of that. Oftentimes, I may add in piano two. I love piano two. Some people like piano one. I like piano two. So uh, I often build a lot with that. With just a lot of Sundays, I use utilize mostly just these two uh, plugins or these two libraries uh, to make it through pretty much church service because it gives me pretty much everything I need as a keys player. Especially if there's nothing comp complicated going on that particular Sunday, uh, I don't have to worry about having anything complex, you know, on on deck. I can just use MK since uh, use Alicia Keys as my base and have um, you know layer on top of that with uh, MK Sensation and build you know whether we're doing a fast song or a worship song. I got everything I need within these two soft uh, word libraries. Uh, right in there. Now, oftentimes I run a secondary board that is on top and I run aux stuff from it. So oftentimes what I do, like if I want to run key bass, I'll show you what I often use uh, for key bass. I use one of my favorites. Some people like, um, you know, uh, what is it? Trillion and a myriad of others. I fell in love with this Scarby J bass uh, years ago. <laughs> I don't know. Now, I've I've ran key bass before on keyboards, on hardware keyboards. All of the hardware keyboards that I've played on in over the years, I have never heard a finger bass patch on any of those keyboards that have that kind of detail, that kind of warmth, that kind of realism. That's just really real. It sounds like a real freaking bass player playing. And so I love using uh, this particular one, this particular library, because of its realism. I mean, it just feels like you have a bass player. When you're running key bass, it feels like you have a bass player there. And so I use that a lot of times for uh, bass uh, and running different things like that, which is it just sounds just so rich, so warm, just dope. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so it's kept me from, again, buying hardware. You know, when I got stuff like access to stuff like this and it's so expandable, let's take a look at some stuff here in Omnisphere that I like to use. I picked up Omnisphere a few years ago, way before Keyscape. I just bought into it because it just is so rich um, and some of the stuff that they just have in here. Like if I just go here to strings uh well all and go to these favorite patch of strings that i use here um it's called uh adagio and you're talking about some real sounding strings uh oh because by because i got key keyboard let's go to where is that pads and strings there we are adagio transparent warm you load you up a patch like this during a worship song let me uh, reset this real quick.
I mean, like I said, you got motif strings, you got background strings, and you got, you know, uh, analog strings on like a Triton or something like that. It just does not compare, you know what I'm saying, to, um, it just doesn't compare to, um, you know, anything I hear on any keyboard that's, uh, that's, that's on the market. That's just amazing. You know what I'm saying? That's just amazing the way that that sounds. Just so, 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 so warm, so expressive. Um, I mean, and then there's so many other sounds outside of, even outside of the strings uh, that I like to use. Let me just go up here to all. Let's pick through some of these. Uh, let me close contact here. Seems like I got some stuff eating into my CPU here. I know when I stream, it tends to get heavy on the CPU uh, as I kind of move through. Let me try a couple of things here really quickly. See if I can get my CPU back to where it needs to be. And then we'll continue. Should kind of get it. Anyway, we'll keep pushing. So another sound that I like to use in terms of leads, and I'm just gonna do a few sounds because I'm just furious. I've used tons of stuff from here. Um, I've used tons of stuff uh, from in here in this particular. Uh, That's one that I use a lot. I mean, just dope stuff like that as far as leads uh, and other types of, you know, strings. It's, I mean, Omnisphere has like 15,000 sounds uh, built into it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so it's just the, 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 the possibilities are just endless i like to there's another joint uh i like to use i think it's called agape something uh i know it's called agape agape something or another oh yeah agape sheen You take that and layer that like with a piano. Let me see if I can get this thing to act right. You know, for some reason my CPU is, give me a second guys here. Let me see if I can troubleshoot what is making my CPU jump here. Something is causing the problem. I don't know what it is it does that makes it do that. But nice rich kind of sound. Uh, another one I like is enchanted flute uh that yes this one right here is another go-to that i use You know what I'm saying? I wish I had a secondary board that I could uh, that I could pull up here and show you guys, like you know, having mains piano on the bottom and then being able to you know solo using that. But 
Again, those are just a few of the ones inside of Omnisphere that I like to use. So if you're looking to say, hey, I'm trying to get into the soft synth world, hard software world, these are some kind of go-to things that you want to look for and want to kind of look into investing in. You got Omnisphere, you got um, you got Contact, you definitely want to get that complete and there's vast amounts of libraries that you can use uh, inside of Contact, even if you don't get Omnisphere. One of the main ones to get into investing is Contact, if you're going to be getting into it. I think that's probably one of the foundational ones, excuse me, to get in order to, you know what I'm saying, continue to build your library. Because it just opens you up. You can, you're not limited to bank A, bank B, bank C bank D and two expansion slots, you know what I'm saying? On a hardware keyboard and the sounds that you, you have when you're on your, um, when you're on your, uh, when you're using your computer, then you're, um, you're, uh, when you're using your computer, then you're limited only by the size of your hard drive. I mean, you can literally hold thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of sounds, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and just, keep building your library and if a new sound comes out that you like or you love you can build on it and use it you know what i'm saying um i'm gonna try to see if i can get this one to act right but my cpu is acting a little stupid at this time i don't know if it's like yo bro i've been working all day you've been working me all day can you please um can you please give me a break let me try this let's just create a fresh session Maybe it's something when this in this session has gotten corrupt or whatever. But that seems to be that seems to have made my CPU just go all the way down. All right, I'm gonna pull up Keyscape again, and we're gonna see if I can get it to act right. So um, Keyscape is the one of the newest kids on the block. Been out about I don't even think it's been out six months yet, but yet and still it is just a. Um, um amazing 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 sounding piece of software um let me get my sound to where you guys can hear it since i opened up a new session uh i would need to just do this right here <laughs> Just a warrant for So, you know, the sound is so very warm. Uh, sound and piano they have a lot of other stuff in here it's got a lot of a lot of electric pianos uh in here as well one i've recently fell in love with was the Wurlitzer 140 b um again i don't like stuff like release noise and pedal noise that's just me if you like that kind of stuff it's in there. And it's got a ton of electric pianos that you can kind of fool with. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the, the purpose of this is not for me to go through all of these sounds and show you every sound, but to kind of show you some of the ones that I use on a regular basis that have kept me from buying new keyboards. I mean, they've got like the MKS 20 stuff. You guys have heard about this, the electric piano, E-Piano 1 and E-Piano 2. similar to MK Sensation, 
uh, piano one, piano two, I'm a piano two kind of guy. <laughs> So um, that's one of these are some of the reasons why I don't um, I don't use um, hardware anymore is because there's just so many sounds uh, that are available to you in these um, you know in all these different libraries made by all these different companies and these are just a few you got Omnisphere there's um, um, which is made by Spectrosonics Keyscape there is um, um, contact, which is just a million sounds in one. There's even stuff in UVI now. Jamal Hardware has developed uh, several libraries for what they call the UVI workstation, uh, which looks like this. Uh, it's similar to contact, uh, but you can load up different libraries uh, inside of it. Jamal has this uh, joint. Jamal Hartwell has this joint called uh, uh, Pure Synth Platinum that has a lot of you know just i'm just loading up just something random just to show you the interface uh, of it but it's set up with a ton of sounds and and waveforms and it's basically like a rompler and a, and everything all in one synthesis that you can just build and create and do your own sound design with i've used this on a lot of stuff uh, a lot of stuff. I've used this on a lot of recording stuff. I've used this on a lot of um, of uh, live stuff, you know, when I needed to. So, yeah. I mean, it's just good stuff. It's so many options out there that expand your world beyond, like, again, I said, bank A, bank B, bank C, so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, so, it's really, really dope. So, let me, let me look at some of the questions and stuff uh, that you... Um, that you... Um, that you guys got in here some questions that i may have missed and stuff rj what's up with your man i see you rev um rich kingdom what's going on what's going on hey to everybody i just kind of jumped in and i didn't even uh didn't even say hey to nobody i just dumped in and started started uh started started you know talking and yapping always up to something martin Warren Hardy says I was getting a montage for eighteen ninety eighty eight for nine eighteen ninety nine a day. Wow, that's a good deal. Actually, it really is. <laughs> Running the guitar sitting like there's free chicken. Yes, I checked out the RD two thousand back at um, Nam, and it was really really dope. Really really dope. Um, uh, stay tuned for some stuff with that. I'm I'm. I'm not gonna open up my mouth about some stuff about that RD2000. I'm just gonna let you guys see see that what's gonna come of that RD2000. I saw some stuff at Nam uh, that I'm not gonna open my mouth about just yet. I'm sleep on my, on new hardware running soft sense with my ES7. I, I got you. I feel you, KD. Your motif was stolen a few years ago. Ran nothing but MK sensations in the 61 key. MIDI for four months. See, that's similar to my story, not the stolen, but my keyboard, my hardware keyboard stopped working on me. I'm not going to give the name of it. People have been inboxing me, asking me what was the name of the keyboard. I'm not going to give the name of it. Um, uh, my hardware keyboard messed up on me years ago, and I, um, I started uh, using software. I had a MIDI controller. I think it was like an M-Audio key station not even the 88, like the old joint, the 61 key gray key station. That's all I had. And uh, Logic. I didn't even know about contact and all of this stuff back then. This was, I'm telling you, you're talking 2010, 11 time frame. I didn't know anything about contact and complete and, and MK sensation and Neo So Keys. All that stuff was out at that point in time. But I had no idea about it. All I knew was that, hey, until I can get me a new keyboard, I'm going to use this um, MIDI controller and the Logic Piano. You know what I mean? And the Logic Piano and strings and layer some sounds inside of uh, Logic until I can get by to get me another keyboard. And I end up just exploring this whole world of new sounds. And it just led me into this whole journey where I never bought another keyboard. I mean, seven, seven, almost seven years later. 
I'm still running software every Sunday, every service, every gig, everything. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Just It's just crazy. Yeah, Omni is my go-to for anything. Auxiliary pads, warmth, um, anything that's going to be as an underlayer, as a bed, so to speak, to my... Um, to my um, um, uh, stuff like that. Uh, Greg, I'm not tracking uh, or sound design. I'm just um, showing, I was just sharing some sounds on the front end, a lot of sounds that I've used over the years that's kept me from buying new keyboards. Uh, Joe Barfield says, darn, that sounds nice. Why don't they have sounds like that on iPad? Uh, well, Joe, it's several reasons. One, because the iPad is an emerging product, and I'm going to do a Musician Monday soon on just iPad stuff. I may do that next week. I may do iPad stuff next week. Um, there are some very good sound libraries on the iPad. Very good stuff uh, on the iPad that, that sounds really, really good. I uh, And I use my iPad on occasion, you know, when um, I've had nothing, you know, when I have a lazy Sunday or something, and it's something that I don't want to uh, put a lot of time into or whatever. Uh, you know, lazy Sunday or whatever. I, I, I whip out my iPad and MK sensations and keep rolling, you know? Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm going to MacBook, John, Mike, you sold me. <laughs> what am I using for a controller? These, this big loud. That's a nectar. And you got to remember too, I'm using a condenser mic for my uh for my vocal so you guys can hear me and so a condenser studio mic is very hot i could put a gate on but i just didn't do that on my mixer um but um yeah that condenser picks up everything i'm pretty sure you guys can probably hear the white noise in the room you know the if you got headphones on you know what i'm saying uh, because that condenser just picks up everything and it's sitting like right here and the keyboard is like right there so whenever i touch the keyboard you can hear it um have i seen the new neo soul key uh key studio jamal just dropped a video over the weekend i have not had a chance to watch that video i saw it drop i have not had a chance to to watch it but i've been talking with me and jamal been talking about that um for a while like i know the last year and he mentioned he's talked told me so well, he hadn't told me a lot i'm gonna say he told me everything about it so i'm pretty sure there's some stuff in there i hadn't even seen but he's talked about it uh over the last year and how amazing it was going to be uh and he's got some he's got some dope stuff in the pipeline i don't want to give the brothers information out uh because that's not my place but he, jamal's got some dope stuff coming out uh here real real soon uh, that he's been t telling me about and showing me and it's going to be really sweet. It's going to be really, really sweet. And I'm probably going to have that as well when it comes out. So yeah, it's going to be dope. It's going to be dope. Yeah. Uh, Stanley, my CPU, I'm not sure what's going on. Why it's spiking. I don't know. Um, what's causing it. I'm still trying to get this whole streaming thing, all of the bugs out of it. I really don't know what's causing it. You know what I'm saying? I really don't know. I've been trying to ferret that out because I like streaming like this. It lo it allows me to share high quality audio, high quality video in the sense you guys can see my desktop. You can hear my audio at the, the way that I hear it. You know what I'm saying? And it's not ambience coming from a computer you know what I'm saying, uh, or, you know, the phone microphone or whatever, you know, I'm just that guy that likes to jump out and, hey, if it, if I make mistakes, if it sounds, um, I've jumped out and done so many live videos and it, you know, it sounds wonderful and everything works perfectly. Then every now and then I get on a bad connection stream like this and I can't stop it because I've gotten into it and I'm doing it live. So it's nothing I can do about it. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I hadn't figured out what's, but once I do figure this out and get it all solid, it's going to be wonderful. Otherwise, I'm still going to keep going. You know, I've seen some horrible Facebook live videos that people do with their cell phones that sound and look 
10 times worse than what this is. Um, so again, I apologize. And I'm running this on a, um, on a 2008 Mac Pro, uh, which normally handles things very well. I just don't know what's going on with it tonight. Um, what do I think about UVI Synth Anthology 2? Its uh, budget is super tight. 149 is it worth it? I have heard a lot about the anthology stuff. I just don't know. I've never experienced it. I've never used it, so I cannot vouch as to whether or not it is worth the buy. Uh, Scotty Pierce says, if you get contact, you can go to eBay and buy sample keyboards for super cheap. I bought the whole JV2080 module, the Phantom, uh, and some rolling modules, and it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, there are tons of people that have sampled older keyboards. There's a million MKS20 and JV2020, and I've seen people that talk about the Nord sample libraries that's out there. Uh, there are it's just tons of them. It's tons of stuff out there. I mean, the, pretty much anything you can think about inside of contact you can find. Um, so, yeah, I agree with you uh, on there, Scotty Pierce. I've gotten some stuff from the motif myself uh, from a guy named Junior Lee that sampled uh, some stuff uh, from the motif. Uh, and I picked up a lot of sounds from him uh, and some other people. There are just tons. Of, if you have contact, there's just tons of options that are available to you uh, in order to, uh, to use or what have you. Okay, folks, well, that's all I really wanted to show you. I didn't want to make tonight long. I didn't want to make it a big to-do. I just wanted to hop on and show some different sounds and different things that I use over the years uh, to um, some things that I've used over the years that's kind of kept me going. Uh, I'm not going to hold no more time. I'm trying to keep this going, this Musician Monday thing. Uh I did it early last week. I'm going to try to keep it around this time frame and keep things kind of going around this, you know, time frame with you guys uh, and and kind of move from there or what have you. And just trying to share, just trying to do some things for the community. I appreciate you guys when you hit the share button, when you tell other people about it. I'm just a regular guy. I ain't no superstar. I ain't no, um, you know what I mean, super duper Grammy Award winning super national, international, you know what I mean, guy. I'm a regular dude sitting in my studio doing videos on this stuff and just trying to help people. That's my goal at the end of the day. I'm trying to help folks. I'm trying to increase people's knowledge because when I was learning this stuff, when I started in on this stuff, um, nobody was teaching this stuff. Everybody was online teaching how to play keys, and teaching how to be uh, dope on the keyboard, you know what I mean, and, and transitions and chords, and nobody had time to show or wanted to show or had the technical knowledge enough to show people how to use this stuff, this technology, and use your computer and use soft sense and all this stuff. So I kind of had to chart this path out myself. So uh, I just try to share knowledge. That's all I try to do. I don't try to be better than anybody. I don't try to be... Um, you know what I mean? I don't try to outdo nobody or outshine nobody or step in anybody's path or anybody's lane. I'm just doing this thing myself. You know, I'm just sharing what's in my heart. I want to die empty. You know what I mean? And I'm, I don't plan on dying anytime soon. So I got, and I, cause I got a lot in me. I got so much stuff that's deep down on the inside, uh, that I need to get out. I got books I need to write. I got manuals I need to cover. I got people I got to touch. I got tracks I got to record. I got classes I got to do. You know what I mean? I got so much that I need to take care of or what have you. So I'm just trying to share that knowledge, that wisdom, and bless people. Because I found that the more that I give, the more God gives back to me. The more of this information that I share, the more stuff that he opens up to me, the more opportunities he opens up for me. So I just keep doing that. All right, folks, I'm out. I appreciate y'all. Hit that share button. Do all that good stuff like that. Uh, it's Musician Monday. I'm John Mike. I'm your host. We'll see you next week. Holla at your boy.